Hi, Mark Tilbury here again with the Max Thrust Ruckus uh, from Century UK and Max Thrust. Um, we've shown you a box reveal and uh, we thought we'd uh, come back and show you the build. Now this could be uh, potentially one of the fastest builds that we've um, done. We've tried to make the model as simple to build as we possibly can and still get it in a box. Um, most important thing, as I always say, is the instructions and it's well worth reading through this manual. It's very simple, it's got a few safety uh, warnings, um, bits and pieces and disclaimers, so have a read through that. It's all important stuff and just familiarising yourself with the manual before you build generally will save you a lot of time during the actual build process. So, um, even having written that, I will refer to the manual as we go through. Now, you will need basically three tools for the assembly of this model. You will need a spanner, you will need a knife, and you will need a screwdriver, a Phillips type screwdriver. A little bit bigger than this will probably help, um, but this one does seem to fit most screws. So, first and foremost, I'll take the bits out of the box so we'll get rid of that. No longer required at this stage. And then we can get on with the build. Now, I always like to make sure I've got a nice clean surface to build on. And in the box, you get two nice little bits of foam, which are really handy for putting on your workbench to stop your model getting crushed while you're working on it. We we'll start with the fuselage. And um, what I do is I take the canopy off. Um, because otherwise I've got quite a round surface to work on and it's much better if I can just pop it on to those foam beds and just protect the model a little while I'm putting it together. Now the first thing to go onto the model is the undercarriage. Now you've got two legs, which are these two here, one, two, and they're held on with four self-tapping screws. So we'll find the screws here, one, two, three, and four. And these just self-tap, obviously, straight into the model. So we'll grab the first um, undercarriage leg. You can see on this okay down here. So basically just align the, the undercarriage. Just loosely put in two screws. You don't need to do these right up. And I'll show you why once I get that second leg on. So second leg goes on. Now the reason you don't want to tighten the first two up is because if it tightens it just slightly out of line then um, it makes putting the second leg on just a little bit more awkward. Not a lot more awkward but you know just a little bit so every little tip helps as you go through the assembly of the model. So now you can screw down on those screws and get that undercarriage into position and the nice thing to put an undercarriage on first it does give you a nice firm base to actually start assembling the model. So there we go, we've got three in, coming up now, there you go, fourth one going in, like so. Phone's ringing away in the distance, more ruckus orders coming in, which we like to hear. So there we go, undercarriage is on. And we'll just put the ESC back into place like so. Next stage is the tailplane and fin. Now for the tailplane and fin, it will refer in the manual to uh, need requiring a knife at this stage. I think it's the only stage that you require a knife on this model. And it's purely in the moulding of the model. It leaves a small little piece of foam at the back of the model. And it's just a case of cutting that piece out, following the lines of the model, and it'll pop out like so. A little bit extra. Just like that. And that's all ready to accept the tailplane now. So, let's grab the tailplane. Now, I've got to make sure we use this the right way up. You could actually install it inverted. Uh, it wouldn't make any difference to the flying characteristics of the model, but the horn is on the bottom of the model, and also the writing is on the bottom of the tailplane. So turn that over. That basically just slots into place like so. Nice and easy. Make sure it's roughly lined up, but we can do that from underneath in a minute when we do the fin. So that's the tailplane on. Then we have the fin. There's the fin. Now you've got to be careful when you're putting the fin on that you do remember to locate the um, steerable tail wheel which all comes pre-installed on the model. So you put the fin on like so, just push it down slightly and then locate the steerable tail wheel on the back of the rudder like so. The fin is now on, I'm actually going to put the canopy back on because I don't think that's, um, that's an issue, just keep everything tied in out of the way. Turn the model round. And then we've got two screws to hold the tailplane and fin in place. 
So it's just a little jiggle here and there. We already made sure we're roughly lined up. Another little jiggle there. We put the screwdriver in and as we tighten it, it will actually tighten down on the rudder, sorry the fin, pulling the fin close to the tailplane and that clamps the tailplane in place. So there you go, as quickly as that we have the uh, tailplane and fin in place. Nice and stiff as well, nice and sturdy which is good. Again, just resting things on the foam and keeps them protected. Um, now at this stage you can connect your control surfaces and these are little quick link type clevises. And now it's always best to be fairly careful with quick links. Just a little tiny light squeeze and they're in place. I normally go for the, the, hot, the next hole up from bottom because that will give me a nice soft feel to the model when I first fly it. And then again the same on the rudder. Just make sure it's going to go through the hole nicely, which it does, just like so. And then just a little squeeze just to get them together and that will keep in place. And you've got retainers you can then slide over them. I generally don't do that at this stage. I make sure my radio's all hooked up and they're in the right position. I haven't got to do any more adjustments. Then I lock them into position. So there you go, one fuse large ready to rock and roll. Now we've got the, um, the propeller and the spinner. Very, very straightforward on the propeller and the spinner. Just undo the two screws and the spinner comes in half. There we go, just like so, nice and easy. The propeller goes straight onto the front of the model, just like so. And then all we've got to do is tighten that up. Now, it's not a fuel driven model, so you don't have to over tighten the nut, just enough. I always say, if you do a little pinch, then that's it. It's tight enough, you don't need to do any more than that. Um, with a fuel driven model it's a little bit different because of course on a fuel driven model you've got um, the, the, the model or the engine back firing on you and things like that and obviously that can actually make the propeller come loose whereas on the, um, on the electric model obviously it's an instant start up um, you don't generally um, shed a prop as you may do on a fuel driven model so basically there you go, spinner in place, two screws, fairly straightforward and da, 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 just like so. So one spinner in place. Make sure that's not actually physically rubbing anywhere. Um, it shouldn't do. The motor's far enough forward that that shouldn't happen anyway. Um, looking at our instruction book, we know we're now onto the wing already. So it doesn't take very long here. Now, another nice thing with this model, the wing is very, very strong, but it also has a full strength aluminium solid spar. Uh, so you might say a little bit over the top, but this is an all-round everyday sort of model, so you want a nice strong machine. Put the spar straight in, and it has a locator on it, so you know you've pushed it in far enough. Remove the um, connectors for your aileron and your navigation lights. Install a locator. This is purely a locator to stop the wing twisting while you're putting it together. On your other wing panel, again, just remove your leads for your ailerons and for your uh, navigation lights and then we should be able to put a pair of them together so locate it together keeping those wires upwards and then just a little snap together and that's it the wing is together and it's ready to be installed on the model so we just turn that over you can see the locating holes look quite big for your bolts um, and they would be but the nice thing on this machine is we've got a belly pan that actually locates on that. So it locks the wing together on this um, built-in um, design feature here. And also it locks the wing by the these uh, bolt retainers nestling in these wing holes. So as soon as I put that together, that wing's not coming apart. That is together now, which is quite nice. And obviously all your control surface uh, connections are there. Now, on this model, save you having to go out and buying it, we do actually give you your Y leads included as well. So, um, again, hopefully you can see this nice and clearly, um, but your Y leads just connect either into your receiver or obviously you can connect them first to your wing if you wish, like so. Some people then put extension leads onto their receiver. It just makes screwing that wing on down at the field on a Sunday morning that little bit quicker and easier. So we'll just connect the last one of those in, like so. 
Now I'm going to remove the canopy again because I'm going to turn the fuse large over. So it goes over like so. And then we're going to pop the wing on. Now when you put the wing on, you need to thread your um, wires and extension leads through like so. This is why some people do put extra extension lead on their receiver just to make life that little bit easier. And we're all for making our lives just that little bit easier of course. And then that wing just nestles into place like so. No big dramas, nice and easy. And we've even coded your screws. Two long ones for the front, one short one for the back. So hopefully they should just locate nice and easily on there. And pop pop arm. That's the rear screw. And then the front screw. Number one. And then rear screw. Just like so, and there you go guys, so if I pop that back in there, all you've got to do on top of that is install the receiver of your choice, be it Spectrum, Futaba, or Microzone, or whatever radio you fancy, and that model is ready to give you hours of fun, absolutely hours of fun. It will fly in winds up to 30 mile an hour. You might not want to go out in that, but this model's pretty happy. It don't know it's windy, so get yourself a ruckus, get it together. You can build it ready, you know, buy it on Friday, have it ready for Saturday morning. Get expert with it on Saturday and go and impress your mates on Sunday morning. So anyway, that's Mark Tilbury over and out on this particular video. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to ring a ding a ding on the old like button down below and subscribe. We'll have more videos coming your way and coming your way soon. See you later.